Hey, welcome back to Big Boy. Uh, tonight, I want to talk a little bit about OCS because I just had uh, you know, wrapped up my second play of the DAC2 uh, campaign. And while I, this time I only got through 81 turns of the game, you know, you can get to the full. Hang on one sec. I've got my door open and, and it's raining and. Uh, the dogs really want to come inside, so I'm trying to see if they'll stay outside without me having to yell at them. So, anyway, so I, I finished um, I finished up this campaign, and uh, after two back to backs uh, of DAC two, which just prior to that I played uh, the Blitzkrieg Legend back to back, which is only you know ten I think ten turns each campaign or twelve turns or something like that, and. Uh, the only other OCS I've played has been one or two turns on Vassal and a small learning campaign on uh, from Good Aaron's Blitzkrieg. So all up, I'm probably 150 turns worth of experience. So not a substantial amount given how long the system's been out. The system's been out for what, 10 or 12 years or maybe even longer, maybe maybe 15 years now. I'm really I'm not sure when the first one was uh, released. So. Uh, over the course of playing uh, for 10 or 15 years, you've probably played thousands of turns and have a uh, very comfortable innate knowledge of the system and can spend more time on the subtleties and the strategy and the history of the topic at hand. So with that caveat in mind, I, I wanted to share my impressions of the game because I had, uh, uh, I had some challenges with the first playthrough we I just got 56 turns in and Rommel was done he was dancing on the Sphinx and having a great time in Cairo and had a harem and it was great yeah crazy time he had an awesome time and the Commonwealth just got their ass kicked from from City Barani all the way all the way back to basically to Cairo I mean we stopped before then but uh, it was over um, I had a hard time with defense, and my here's my concern is that when I start to look at the East Front and Case Blue and Gideon's Woods Creek and um, I don't want to play any at the gate, but Hughes Pocket and Baltic Gap and all those uh, titles, I'm concerned that I'm making either, either making fundamental mistakes or not thinking through the the correct uh, the correct way to handle. A defensive situation and so I guess I'm uh, one I'm, I'm asking for opinions and thoughts and advice so those that have had a look at some of the AARs that are written up or in video uh, in perhaps video is best because you can see see the layout see the situation uh, particularly in the first campaign anyway because all the, all the video is done for that it's all out uh, I, I'd be curious to see what seasoned players think of the Commonwealth play and how the Commonwealth played their hand. Uh, I felt like I played the the defense much better as the French and the the Allies in uh, uh, the Blitzkrieg Legend. You know, I used reserves better. I used artillery more effectively. I felt like I was starting to build a little bit of depth of defense, but in um, in, in uh, DAC, I, I don't feel like you have that luxury because, the, you know, you're, you're working on a front that's, this, that's this, literally this big. There's no sweeping maneuvers around things. So um, it's hard to, and, and it's hard to do something in depth because there's two, maybe three roads to, to divide the whole, I keep looking down because that's where the camera's pointing, you're up there, I'm looking down here. Stay with me, I'm here. Um, there's three roads, twenty, or maybe 15 or 20 hexes deep of map is really what you're playing on the whole time, but you're, moving, you're playing across four or five maps or whatever the case might be. And um, you can't really do these massively deep penetrations and use extenders because you don't have enough trucks to do that. So you're really relying on the throw of the DAC uh, the DAC headquarters unit, you're relying on uh, pushing uh, dumps forward, you're relying on 
airdrops and things like that as the access player and as a commonwealth player you've got tons of supply but you're 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 anchoring yourself on mercer because it's got the toughest terrain with the escarpment that runs down so i, I even with that and we're trying to defend just two hexes with uh, level one hedgehogs and stacks of two or three regiments I really still struggle because you, all it takes is that one good roll where your Germans are coming in you they DG you uh, disrupted you and you're uh, looking at a two to one three to one attack maybe at best because you've got maybe 18 factors in there and you've divide you've uh, you're in a hedgehog, so you, that's about the best you can do is about 18 factors without being overstacked and having penalties for uh, any sort of bombardment. So 18 factors divided by two is nine. So if the Germans come in with uh, you know 20, 25 factors and get surprise and get two, three, or four on the surprise roll, well they're rolling through there, and then that's where the defense in depth thing um, hasn't worked for me because. I think perhaps maybe I was putting too much up front and not enough, not enough in depth. But once you're through, there's nothing to stop you. There's no terrain to anchor yourself on because the escarpment is the escarpment, and that's it. And there's two, three, or four hexes that you can penetrate through. And once you're through there, it's kind of open fields, but supply is an issue. So what's my point of all this? My point of all this is I'm. I've really enjoyed the game. In fact, when I was playing something, while I have, I've got two or three different games set up at the moment. And while I was playing those games, my mind was constantly thinking, I should be playing DAC, because DAC is gonna take the longest to play, and has the most turns, and is the most complex, in terms of the thought that goes into each turn, in terms of gameplay, not in terms of mechanics, because I feel reasonably comfortable with the system. Still made mistakes, and still you know, made errors, and forgot to divide something by two, or add one here, or through too far or whatever I did, but it all kind of washed out in the end. I'm not fussed about any of the rules mistakes I made up until the very last turn when we uh, were goofing around with breakouts and things. But um, really because we were just desperate trying to find a way for the allies to survive. Um, but I'm concerned that, I, and so I was preoccupied by the game. Now that I'm done with it, uh, I'm, I'm kind of relieved. I'm kind of, wow, that was a great experience. I didn't want it to end, but now I'm glad that it ended. Because I'd like to play it again sometime, but I'm not sure that I want to uh, want to have that same experience, because it's been the same experience twice. Whereas the allies, you know, they, they hang tough, they hang tough, they hang tough, they give a little ground, they hang tough, they hang tough, they give a little ground. And they never felt like they had enough force to really, uh, really try and um, push back and attack back at the uh, at the Germans and the Italians, at the Axis forces. So, um, I really like the system. I really like that particular title. I, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated by the game system. I wish I had 500 turns out of my belt, not 150. Uh, Playing solo is also a challenge as well. I'd love to be able to play. Hang on a second. Outside. Good boy. Good boy. Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I'd love to play somebody, and and I've started. I started to play with uh, one chat from BGG, and and I was just making a mess of stuff and wasn't structured enough on Vassal to play. Um, I, I have a hard time playing something with the scale of OCS and being structured enough and go from top to bottom of the map and do all of this first and do that second. I'm the type of player that I go straight to where the problem area is, resolve that, and then work it all backwards from there uh, and around from there. So often, you know, I would uh, I would move pieces when I play and then go, oh, you know, I'm going to be i moved these guys, I'm going to be out of supply if I do that, I should have thought of that earlier should have moved my HQ first or I should have moved to dump up to point X hmm, I didn't do that so I'll rewind I'll rewind my move and pull that move back and put him back to where he was I have no issue with, with doing that because I'm doing it solo 
but you can't do that in Vassal because it gets confusing and messy, and people don't like uh, people don't like that. I don't think anyway. And, uh, and I kind of like to get it all right in a Vassal mod in a Vassal log file for people. Anyway, no, that's a whole other thing. So the game is really interesting. It's fascinating, and, 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 I, and I, I, it frustrates me when I hear people say they they don't they're not enjoying the game or they're not uh, they're not getting. They're not able to do anything in the game because they don't have enough supply. Um, uh, you know, it's not that you're playing it wrong, uh, but maybe there's a different approach you can take to the game. And I wish uh, I'm not competent enough to coach people on how to play or what to do, but um, you can achieve a lot with a very little amount of supply. And uh, it's a great title. It's got. It's got lots of uh, replayability. It's got lots of small scenarios. So I'm really a big fan of DAC2. I'd encourage anyone to get it, or even the original one, and use the updated rules and, and make the little modifications and adjustments that are needed. Uh, so anyway, so that was kind of my my. I've just finished playing. Uh, it's my kind of my gut feel on how I'm feeling about uh, the game and the game system. Um, I will talk to you soon, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what. What the next uh, the next few big things are that we're going to play for uh, for this chronological walk through World War Two? Cheers.